My name's Annie and welcome to Kit Guru. So Cooler Master are known for their PC parts and components, but they don't just make cases and power supplies, they also make peripherals too. So today we're checking out the MM731 wireless mouse that comes in at $89.99, but is it really worth nearly £100? Let's find out. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy our videos as it helps us out for free. The MM731 wireless is $89.99, but they also make a wired only version, the MM730 for $64.99. We'll just be focusing on the MM731 wireless for this review, however. The box is pretty basic, and inside we just get the essentials, a quick start guide, a USB cable, a USB-A to USB-C adapter, a pack of rubber grips that you can attach if you'd like. The cable is an ultra-weave braided material. It's 1.8 meters in length and has a USB-A on one end and a USB-C on the other. These are both gold-plated too. The cable is super flexible, very reminiscent of Razer's Speedflex cables. Kinks do pull out but with a bit of force, but as always braided cables can run the risk of snagging on the back of your desk edge, which is why many prefer rubber cables. This isn't an issue for me personally because my desk is wall-mounted, but worth pointing out anyway. Really. This shouldn't be an issue for anyone though, since, well, it's a wireless mouse. The cable can be used as a dongle extender as well, used with the USB-A to USB-C adapter. This is handy if your system is quite far away from your desk or difficult to access. The actual wireless USB dongle for the mouse is found inside the mouse on the underneath. There's a small door that, upon opening, springs the dongle out from its recess to help you easily remove it. It's a very simple design with just a spring underneath, but it's actually quite a nice quality of life bonus. Design-wise, the mouse is one of the more simple and understated designs we've come across. It's available in white too, but our sample is a stealthy black colorway with just a single RGB LED zone on the back in the shape of Cooler Master's logo. It's not Screaming Gamer at all, it's not jagged and angular like many other mice on the scene, and I think it's actually a great stealthy look that could easily pass in a workplace. Shape-wise, it's almost like a combination of the Microsoft IntelliMouse and a Razer Death Adder, but the mouse that comes closest to its shape is probably the Ninjutsu Origin 1X. The left side curves in for better thumb comfort, whereas the right side at the back flares out whilst curving in at the front for finger and pinky comfort. It's a medium hump, and whilst the left click button has a very slight comfort groove, the right really doesn't. The body is made up of separate sections, one on each side, the back shell, and then two separate left and right click shells too. The mouse is right-handed ergonomic shape and aimed at claw and palm grip. For me, I actually found fingertip grip and claw grip more comfortable, but palm grip does work, it just leaves your pinky dragging around a bit. Since this is a lightweight mouse at just 59 grams, I wouldn't want to slow myself down by dragging my finger around, but both claw and fingertips stop that from happening. Underneath we have PTFE glide pads that also aid for a quick experience. They feel great on my oversized mouse mat. Despite this being a super lightweight mouse at just 59 grams, I did have a slight annoyance when using it, and that's down to weight placement and balance. Sadly, the mouse isn't correctly balanced. When you lift the mouse or move it, especially if you're using a low DPI for FPS games, or even just general use in my case, the back end of the mouse drops down instantly or it just stays on the mat entirely. This means you have to grip the mouse much firmer to lift the entire thing up. This isn't an issue if you grip your mouse quite firmly, but for me, especially since this is a lightweight mouse, I use a very light claw or fingertip grip to be as fluid as possible, and this definitely is noticeable to me. If the weight was distributed evenly, or even the bulk of it being in the center of the mouse, the experience would be much better without having that sort of back heavy feel. Button wise, it's very simple again. We have two gloss black buttons on the left side for forward and back. Our scroll wheel click and flipping the mouse over, we have our DPI switching button towards the bottom. Pressing the scroll wheel in and forwards or backwards buttons changes the RGB LED color or effects modes. You can change this via the software, but we'll talk about that later. The MM73 
one is loaded with LK optical mouse switches too, which actuate much faster than mechanical switches and also cut out debounce delay. Both left and right switches are consistent in feel and they're super fast and snappy too. They give off a nice click letting you know that the click has been inputted and also a huge lifespan of 70 million clicks. There is very minor pre and post travel on the primary buttons, but honestly you wouldn't notice this. You have to press impractically lightly to notice it at all. It's just me being nitpicky here really. The scroll wheel has a nice resistance, it's not loose at all and it's not too firm. It has noticeable incremental steps and the scroll button, whilst not being as clicky as the primary buttons, is still clicky. Sadly the forward and back buttons on the left have a lot of post travel if pressed with a little force. They don't take much to actuate but my natural pressing force causes a lot of post travel. Here's a sound test of all the buttons for you. Build quality wise there's no flex when pressed on the top or sides and none of the buttons actuate when pressing either. The scroll wheel doesn't rattle much at all either but there is a slight noise when shaken. Despite the build quality actually being pretty good, there's still that weird weight equals good quality issue I struggle with. And for me, first impressions of the mouse are that it feels more like a £30 mouse and not a £90 one. But after using it, it's actually very good. And of course, it's purposefully designed to be lightweight. Some people may not find this an issue, but back in the day, Beats by Dre placed weights inside the headphones to give the illusion of quality. Connectivity wise, we have three options with the MM731. We have of course a wired mode using the included 1.8 meter ultra weave cable that we mentioned earlier. It's a USB-A for the PC input and a USB-C to connect to the mouse. We also have Bluetooth 5.1 as an option too. If we look at the underside of the mouse you can see a switch on the right hand side. The middle option is for wired, the left option is for Bluetooth, and the right side of the switch is for 2.4 gigahertz wireless. Bluetooth is a well welcome option here. It boasts excellent battery life but it also does come at a cost of performance. Bluetooth mode can only max out at 125 hertz polling rate which means unless you're playing very simple point and click games I'd only recommend Bluetooth for productivity use. On the other hand we have wireless 2.4 gigahertz which is directly aimed at gamers since the mouse manages to have no performance trade-offs in this mode but this time at a cost of lower battery life. I'll go more into specs when we look at the sensor but as mentioned prior we have the USB dongle inside the mouse for wireless use which can be extended via the use of that USB-C to USB-A adapter and cable. Sensor wise we have a PixArt PAW3370 optical sensor up to 19,000 dpi, 1000 hertz polling rate, 50g acceleration, 400 ips. It also offers angle snapping on or off and adjustable lift off distance. Lift off distance can be adjusted in the software from low to high. I tested both of these using the disc method and on low the mouse stopped reading at one disc height. It didn't track at all so that's actually nice and low. Whereas on the high setting the mouse stopped tracking at two discs height. I like that you can change this to your own preference as many other mice don't offer adjustable lift off distance. I'd also like to say that changing the lift off setting via the software didn't require a restart or anything at all. It applies immediately which is nice as other mice that do off a changeable lift off distance can be fiddlier to get to apply the new setting. That's a big win for me. In wireless mode, the sensor performs excellently. I experienced no jitter, delays, cutouts, or anything at all, even when the mouse was approaching low battery. Gaming was a breeze, and I felt confident that the mouse wasn't gonna slow me down in any way. And since this is a lightweight mouse, it's aimed at FPS gamers, and that's definitely where it shines. I had a great time playing Call of Duty with it, but again, the only thing that bugged me was just that weight placement that I mentioned earlier, and that sort of back heavy feel. 
model. Battery life wise we get some bold claims. It has a 500 milliamp hour battery inside and cooler masters say that RGB LEDs turned off, you can expect 72 hours using wireless 2.4 gigahertz mode and a whopping 190 hours in Bluetooth mode. In wireless 2.4 gigahertz mode I turned sleep mode off, put RGB LED brightness to full and effect speed on fast and from a full charge I approximately got about 30 hours so I would expect to get double that with LEDs off and sleep mode enabled. Time to charge too was approximately about 3 hours or so. Lastly let's check out the software that's supported. Download the latest version of Master Plus from the website, it will ask you to update the firmware via a wired method and then also again when you use it in wireless mode to update the dongle. Selecting the mouse on the left we have 6 tabs along the top, wireless this shows an unnecessarily huge picture of the mouse with 2 adjustments below, sleep mode and low power mode, you can also see the battery icon in the top left via any tab selected. The next tab is buttons, this lets you select any button other than the left click and remap them to other buttons keyboard keys, multimedia, rapid fire, macros, the list goes on. Next is performance, this lets you adjust the 7 dpi stages, polling rate, angle snapping, lift off distance, double click speed and also lets you add surface tuning. This works even in wireless mode which is nice as most wireless mice require you to plug it in via the cable to calibrate surfaces. Now I do want to point out that I recorded this screen grab whilst it was plugged in wired but I did actually test this with it in wireless mode so it does work, don't worry. Next is lighting, you can choose between static, breathing, colour cycle and off and you can choose effect speed etc as well. Pretty simple but it's only a small RGB LED zone anyway so I'm fine with this. Next is macro tab to set your macros up and lastly is the profile tab. There are 5 profiles here and you can import and export profiles too. There is a settings button in the top right for the software but sadly this only offers language support and basic system configuration options. So the software is classic Cooler Master with a black, grey and purple design. I like the simplified design of the software overall, it's easy to navigate but I think it's oversimplified in some areas. There's no specific battery percentage displayed when charging or in wireless mode, just a battery icon that goes down over time. This frustrates me as I'd like to know exactly how much battery I have left. The other annoyance is the lack of resizing, it's either basically full screen windowed mode or full screen windowed mode and it just takes up the entire screen. There are resize icons when hovering over the corners of the windows but they don't actually do anything if you try to adjust it. But other than that the software worked well. So in conclusion, despite my first impressions being that it felt cheap due to being super lightweight, it's actually a very good mouse and to be honest, I would say it's worth its full asking price. The optical switches worked flawlessly, the sensor offers great specs and great performance, connectivity options are excellent, the design and ergonomics make the mouse very comfortable for all grip styles during my use and the battery life is excellent too. It's a very good lightweight mouse but the only thing stopping me from giving it full marks are because because it could have been that bit better with better weight distribution and better software offering exact battery percentages and resizing options. Overall though the Cooler Master MM731 is almost, almost simplicity at its finest. I hope you've enjoyed this video, let us know down in the comments. Will you be getting the Cooler Master MM731 wireless mouse? We'd love to know. Check out our merchandise down below, check out our website daily for tech news. And I'm Andy, this is Kid Guru, I'll see you in the next one, thanks for watching.